Watch it. In this video, I'm gonna do a generator hookup for under $100. So for this, I'm gonna be using a generator receptacle. Now this is a 30 amp. I believe it's a L5-30. And this is gonna hook up for a twist lock for my generator. I have a 30 amp plug-in for a trailer, but I have an adapter that I can run to here. And then on the inside of the house, I'm just gonna run the exact same, except the female version. And then I'm gonna use an adapter from here to get your regular receptacle. Now, I was planning on hooking up my own receptacles, but I need to run 10 gauge wire into this box. And I didn't wanna run either 15 or 20 amp receptacles off of here. So for code reasons, I just kept it a 30 amp plug. So 30 amp to 30 amp. And then from there, in case of an emergency, I can branch off to multiple connections. Now, luckily with my house, I have a hot tub hookup and on the other side of this wall here is into the utility room where my furnaces and all my freezers and all my critical loads are going to be. So I'm going to want to run my box up beside this one here and run the wire down through the conduit into the house. If you don't have a scenario like this, you can locate the side of your house with the utilities and then you can run in your own conduit for a pretty cheap price. They do sell kits out on the market that I will leave in the description below where it gives you everything you need in order to achieve this. So there's really two reasons why I'm hooking it up this way. One is so that I don't have to open up my basement window and throw extension cords in in the cold and then have to seal it up temporarily while I'm running things. Uh, this way I just find it easier and it looks a lot cleaner and it's gonna run a lot smarter. And also the second reason is, is I will never backfeed my house. Uh, you can get kits where in your panel it slides over and locks you out so that you can't turn your breaker on to the utility at the same time that you have your generator back feeding your panel. And then secondly, if you do back feed into let's say a dryer plug, that is illegal. When you back feed to the grid, if you're back feeding 240 volts, that gets brought up to the transformer lines and the transformer will actually reverse up that voltage through the lines and you can really hurt somebody if you're back feeding the grid, I'm just not gonna take that chance. So I'm just gonna basically run an extension cord from my wall into the house. And that way I can just plug in in the cold and walk back inside. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to open up this panel. I've de-energized it. I can test it with this tester and I'm not seeing any power. So I'm gonna proceed in a little further. Okay, and now I can see my uh, hookup for my hot tub. I have a 240 volt 60 amp. So these are six gauge wires that are running over to the hot tub. So I'm not gonna connect anything here. All I wanna do is run this knockout and run my wire through the conduit. And I'm not gonna touch anything here, but also just to make sure I have flicked the right breaker. So the power in this box here is dead right now. So it's safe to proceed. Now there is a knockout on the side of the box over here and there's also a knockout right here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of mount this up out of the way like that. And that will give me enough room to be able to connect whatever I need to. And then to connect the two boxes together, I have this offset because these knockouts don't actually line up together. So this is just gonna allow me to kind of offset it so that it sits flat against the wall. The box, I took the screw out that's on the bottom here. This just opens up and then I remove the ground wire here so that I can just have the box. I've got my offset up here on the wall and then I have my offset open here. So when I go to mount this to the wall, it's gonna sit perfectly nice and uh, against the wall so that when I screw it, it will be clear of everything. So now I just gotta drill some holes, put some screws in the wall, and then I'm ready to start running my wire. Okay, I think that turned out rather nicely, uh, except for the sticker residue here, but I'll scrape that off later. Now, another thing to do when you do run conduits like this is you're gonna wanna use this guy here. This is just a plastic washer and it just installs right over top and what that does is it softens this edge here so that you don't have any wires rubbing and then could potentially fray through so i'm going to install that on this side 
And then after I run the wire through, then I'll install the cap on this side. So now next, I'm gonna run the wire up through the conduit from the inside of the house and then run all my wires for the outside here. And this junction box here is where the wires come in. So I have a knockout right there and I'm gonna run it across the ceiling and over. And then this is where my furnace is here. So I've already gone ahead and rewired the furnace. Instead of just going through that switch back to the breaker box, I installed a plug so that it's easy to unplug the furnace and plug it into an inverter or into a generator for this case. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I want to open up that junction box and start running my wire right through the conduit. Uh, something I didn't mention, the wiring I'm gonna be using is some 10-2 wire which is good up to 30 amps. So this is gonna be ideal for this hookup. Okay, now I'm gonna go on the outside of the house and see what that looks like coming out. Coming out here. And there we go. I've run my 10-2 wire through, and then I've noticed that they have a neutral wire here because it's only 240 for the hot tub and they never moretted or electrical tape or anything. So I'm gonna put a moret on it just for safety. It's never a good idea to leave a contactor like this. If this accidentally gets hooked up, then we could have an issue. As you can see in the back, I have two separate bars. I have a neutral bar and a ground bar, and I've run a ground wire over to this, and I'm gonna include it in with this panel to ground this out. Now I have the uh, ground wire for the lid connected and I have my white and my black wire, or my line and my neutral wire. And on the back of this, we have a W, which is gonna be for white, and the other one is gonna be the black wire. So all I need to do is put those in, tighten up the screws on the side, replace the cover back on, and then that's it for the outside. And this is what the outside looks like. We just have this, we have a green light on here. When this lid is flipped up and the generator's plugged in and on, this green light will light up. I'll show you guys that once I'm done hooking up the inside of the house. And I just raise this up and then I can plug my generator in. So I'm all done. I've got my wire coming out of the box here. Comes around, comes through the joist and then turns and goes in. There's like a little header here. So I just ran it right to here. So now if I have a power outage, I just need to take my adapter plug here, which is the 30 amp twist lock to regular house outlets and just plug it in to the receptacle. And then now with the generator running outside, I have power here. I can quite literally unplug my furnace here, my furnace into, directly into the generator now. And then I have two more receptacles that I can run extension cords, power bars, up to 30 amps, whatever I need to run. So yeah, this is gonna help me out a lot in a power outage. I mean, I have a lot of batteries around here that I'm not worried about running out of power that way. So this would probably really only run my chargers. If there was a sustained outage, what I would do is I would run the generator just to recharge the batteries and then turn them off and run autonomously throughout the day or night. And then first thing in the morning, fire up the generator, charge up the batteries, and then I don't have to have the generator running all the time. Okay, now it's time to run my tests. Now I'm using a Champion dual fuel generator. I uh, wouldn't recommend anything different because you can run either propane or gas, which is great. And it has a trailer plug-in. So this is the trailer plug-in. I'm gonna plug that in and then I haven't started this in a while. And there we go. I have the generator outlet and I have an adapter to the twist lock. So plug this in and we will power it up and you can see we have a green light up here, and that's indicating that it's on. And also, with the generator being over here, it's in an overhead protection, and it's out of the wind so that it'll not get rain or sleet or whatever on it in an emergency. And there you have it, we're plugged in here. Got an extension cord, 
and I just got the uh, battery charger on and it's charging. So right now the uh, generator works perfectly fine. So there we go, now I have a way to bring power in the house. And there you have it, now I have a backup way to bring power into the house legally and safely. If you like this video, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.